This NASCAR bus video has been a long time in the making. Steve Wallace has been one of my most requested NASCAR bus videos ever since I started the series. As you could have guessed by the looks and the last name, he is the son of Hall of Famer Rusty Wallace. This was going to be another young driver coming from a famous racing family. His uncles were also Kenny Wallace and Mike Wallace, so it's safe to say he grew up around a ton of racing and saw a ton of success from all three of them. So naturally, he's going to be automatically touted as the next big thing, so immediately he needs to fulfill expectations. And early on, he really did. He became the youngest winner in the 2004 Snowball Derby. That's one of the most, if not the most prestigious race in the late model scene. In 2005, he made select starts in the ARCA Remax series, scoring his first career win at Michigan. He scored two top fives and three top tens in his other starts as well. At just the age of 17, Steve Wallace made his NASCAR Bush Series debut at Memphis. Of course, he was driving for his father's team, Rusty Wallace Racing. He was basically pegged as the future of that team. He went on to finish an impressive 15th in his debut. The hype for Steve Wallace was reaching an all-time high because it also coincided with Rusty Wallace's final season in the Cup Series. He's just got incredible natural talent. How far do you think he can go? He, he can definitely be a champion in NASCAR. He, he don't mind getting behind you, putting a bumper to you, roughing you up a little bit, and they roughed him back up a lot too, and I'm trying to calm him down. Uh, that's not the way I want you to drive. The hype continued for some parts of 2006. In eight ARCA series starts, he scored three wins. Unfortunately, his performances in the NASCAR Bush series paled in comparison. In 17 starts, zero top tens and only three laps led. Perhaps he wasn't ready for the NASCAR Bush series after all. In hindsight, a full-time season in ARCA would have been the way to go, but instead, for 2007, Steve Wallace would drive full-time in the NASCAR Bush series for Rusty Wallace Racing. So he just moves up, moves up to 47, and loses his aerodynamic downforce, spins, catches it back, takes the 66 out. Unbelievable. Two of the talented young drivers, up and coming drivers here in the NASCAR Bush Series. The 47 is the third generation member of the Wood Brothers family, 25 year old John Wood, and of course, a second generation Wallace. Looking back at turn four, there he goes around. Stephen tries to go to the high side to get by him, and up comes Chris Aloff. Yeah, that's just a bad luck right there. He just almost, almost made it. All right, guys, we got the bus. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Well, nobody hit anything terribly hard, but... No, I don't see any damage in any of the cars. They all just spun around. Stephen Wallace trying to hang on, Rusty. He's trying to hang on right now, Jerry, but we're watching the cars that came down pit road a little while ago, and it looks like the car's not hurt. Well, it came in pretty good behind the left front tire. He's racing up on the outside of Kale Gale on the 33. Looks like he may have locked up the brakes getting in the corner. Something. Actually, it looks like we've got to see some smoke. Did they have a leak somewhere, or was that a break? No, I saw some sparks coming out of the right side of it, too. I don't know if... Like flames in the right rear there. You know, guys, I'm not so sure we didn't lose an engine. It's coming out from under the hood. Flames out the side. It looks like the thing is blew an engine up getting down in the corner, so... Is 19-year-old Stephen Wallace, uh, and he's had to, to overcome quite a bit here this weekend at New Hampshire. Yeah, this was qualifying, getting up to speed lap, actually. Tires were cold and car was loose and lost it. They had to go in there and fix it. Oh, Jerry changed tires. This was earlier in the race when they were running side by side. Yeah, a little impatient probably there, just trying to get going and make a pass, and those things are going to happen. But he came out of it uh, pretty much unscathed. Just out of the groove here. This is There's nowhere to go right here. It's almost like running in an alley with these guardrails on both sides. And he just got into the entry of the S's and got too high, tried to make too late of an entry, it appears, and got out in the gray. All right, guys, get in here. He was racing hard for the uh, lucky dog. Or 20 or more lap, or 20 or more cautions, I'm sorry. And it's another case of a car just getting in the corner too deep. You see the 49 car of Brian Keselowski just locked the left front wheel up, couldn't get slowed down. Now, this is after the incident has occurred, and Stephen... Looks like he's tracking the 49 down. Yeah, he did. 
All of the hype Steve Wallace had built up to this point was basically gone after just one full-time season. He had some moments where he scored two poles, sure, but zero top 10s total and a 19th place points finish in your first full-time season? He was already building up a rep for tearing up equipment, and to make matters even worse, during 2008 preseason testing, he ran into a freaking fence. During this time span, there were also a ton of changes that took place during the offseason. Rusty Wallace Racing was going to be switching from Dodge to Chevy for the next two seasons. The performance really didn't improve that much, and the only thing really of note from 2008 to 2009 were some pretty nice moments where he would occasionally get a top 10. It seemed like every time Steve Wallace would get some type of accomplishment, it would also be mirrored with some type of incident after the race. In his first career top 5 finish at Richmond, he got into it with Kyle Busch and ended up yanking his helmet jerking KFB back. For the most part, his performances over the next two seasons in the Nationwide Series did not change. The field, it looks like Edward just went out and trouble on the racetrack. Steven Wallace is going around. Huge break for Kyle Busch. Wallace had fought his way from 30th up to 18th. Looks like he got away with no damage there. Well, a little bit, a little bit on the right rear. Let's go back and show you what happened. That's Landon Castle in the five. And he gets into it. Definitely. And misjudged his front end a little bit there. The front end of his car. And these two young guys are just uh, up on the wheel. Going, hey, wait a minute now. This is my spot. And Steven's warming his tires up. And Carl, and like you say, Steve's one down and Carl's two down. I don't know what in the world is going on there. Look at that. Yeah, that's... that's Steven's on the inside of... P.J. Jones gets into him pretty hard right here. Turns the 81 car around. Steven slows down to avoid getting into the side of P.J. Jones. Here's P.J. and Steven getting ready to make the turn. And well, it could be a little payback here. <laughs> what do you think, Dale? <laughs> well, I'd say, yeah. We saw him racing pretty tight back in this pack. Chasing left one. Huh? Yeah, Jesse got in the left rear of Steven. Nothing, nothing Stephen Wallace could do in that situation. He tries to hang on to it right here, but it goes up across the racetrack and collects these two cars right here. And you see that heavy, heavy Ooh, lick. Carl Scott Edwards Lagasse. just, just wow. snuck by. Take a look. That's Scott Lagacy, uh Jr. on the 11 underneath. Oh, oh, got oh. Right into him. Here we go. Hang on. Ow. Wow. Got spun. Unbelievable. So our third caution comes out, and there's... A lot of damage to the rear of Stephen Wallace's number 66 in power. Yep, here we go. And I'm sure NASCAR is going to be looking to see if anything. I just let him know. Didn't like the way he was racing there. Yeah, hasn't made any contact yet. He really needs to get that car to pit lane. And they can work on it. Yeah, he's just really upset right now, and he's just got to control his temper, get it in. Like I said, it was a big, big race and a fast car, but... Go here, quit playing around up there. Caution car, come out a little early there. Unbelievable, way too early. They were both on the brakes. I just see yeah. the caution car jumping out. Oh, yeah, Trevor Bain sees it. Because he yeah. knows you can't pass the caution car. Cars pitched, including Stephen Wallace and Eric Darnell. Can they sort it out? No. We're going to go yellow. Man, you can see it happen. They come three wide off of turn two. They're locked down together. Unbelievable. Off of turn two, three wide, and they all get hooked like this. Stephen's already in the grass skating. He's going to meet up with these guys in the middle yeah. of this corner. That's taking a... Out a Three or four. <clears throat> Wouldn't you call that bowling for dollars on that? Stephen Wallace goes around. Yeah. Look out. Speaking of driving hard, looks like Stephen Wallace is off in the gravel. A little too hard. Turned around in turn number 10. Look at this. Four, four wide. Oh, oh this is going to be big. Man. Yeah, that was, that was a. Stephen uh, Wallace into the wall. The one car, Gilliland. I'm bored with Gilliland. Listen. Look who you're messing with. Four wide. Four wide. Come on, man. Hold on to it. On board with Steven. 
Yeah, Stephen just got blindsided right there. Hang on to her, All this was happening. Remember from the previous crash, this is Stephen Wallace uh, and his frustration. I think that helmet's going to have to go away. What a great job by all three of these drivers. Ooh, they got to hold on. Oh! And the 66 gets turned the third week in a row. Kansas. And he is into the wall. Kansas spins him with two laps to go. All right, here's another replay. Keep an eye on the 16. There it is. Jacks them in the left rear corner, and it doesn't take these cars are so light when they go through that corner right there. You could almost reach out from the wall and spin the guy out by just pushing it or kicking it with your leg. This will be our ninth green white checker of 2009. Stephen Wallace into the wall. Also, Michael Annette. I don't, don't know what happened with Stephen Wallace, but he got a ton of damage here. Well, he is. Uh, Getting back around, heading for the pits. They were 17th and 18th. How do you see the 66 car get a little bit loose, slide up in the 15 of Michael Annette, had a run, and just got into the back of him. Boy, Tony Range just gets by. All right, let's take a look at it in real speed. Listen. Yeah, it all happened so quickly. 2008 saw only two top fives and seven top tens with a 14th place points finish, while 2009 saw some improvement with one top five, nine top tens, and a seventh place points finish. The problem is he just kept tearing up equipment and it was looking as if his time in the NASCAR Nationwide Series was over, but actually the opposite happened. Five Hour Energy pretty much doubled down on their partnership with them in NASCAR and decided to sponsor him full time over the next two seasons. I think the reality is without Five Hour Energy's backing, Steve Wallace's career in NASCAR would have ended two years earlier. This deal also coincided with a team change from Chevy to Toyota. Perhaps the performance could pick it up a notch. Oh, I, you, you already know what's happening. So you're Brian Scott. He was the other car that was involved in this. Oh, and he gets punted. a little help. That's Wimmer. Yeah. And he collects up uh, Brown there. And oh, Stephen Wallace, just a victim there. Drives up underneath the back of him. Oh, looks like oh. he lost a tire right there. Easy here, easy. You see that right front went down. Right yeah, front yeah, went here. I was more concerned on, about that, but that damage that in the right front. No. Right side damage, pretty heavy. Caution of the day has come out for the Camping World Truck Series. It happens on lap 39, and that's because Steve Wallace cut a right front tire, and into the wall he went. You can see him roll in there, and look, the right front tire looks fine, looks fine. Boom, there Down. it goes flat. And look how that thing almost turns dead right. It, look, it really goes straight, but as a driver, you feel like it turned right. Well. The only thing you're going to get to the front two in this deal is the front of the hauler. Seems pretty obvious after the fact, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's like, where are we going? You can see both the Rusty's cars that he owns, the 62 and the 66, were two on the inside, but that kind of forced the hand of Jason Keller in the 35, and he didn't have anywhere to go, and that's kind of where things started. Still pedal. Still pedal. Still pedal. Middle of four. Two outside. Four wide. Two outside. Whoa, Steven limping. Looks like the uh, right leg or ankle. Yeah, yeah, that's a hard lick, especially when you get hit head on. You don't really have a chance to get the car slowed down. You're getting pushed up there. There he is down toward the bottom of your screen. You see him wobbling a little bit getting in that corner. He was already having trouble when he got to the corner. That got him down on the apron, and then he came back up in the racetrack in front of Steven Wallace. And Steven was getting a push from Travis Quapple, who's trying to race into the 500. Stay low. Stay high. Stay high. Stay, stay high. Stay high. By that point, he had no choice. He was all along for the ride. And here's there what you were talking about a little bit yeah. earlier, down the back stretch. Down the back stretch, and the spotters identify it. They jump on the radio, a little bump at the same time. That's where it throws it, the 66 over on the right rear. See the left front tire? He's turning to the right, turning to the right nothing he could do from the guy who from down under to our neighbors of the north your good buddy Steve Wallace made front page news at Montreal. You know, now Burns, not many people know this, but I was a race car driver once and it does not take a race car driver to see that a car won't fit in this spot. <laughs> Listen to what he said. Me and Carpentier were racing really hard and I got underneath him. I tried to outbreak him. He crowded me. <laughs> 
No, Steven. He didn't crowd you. You friggin' wrecked him! <laughs> I'm not surprised that Jerry Baxter did what he did. You're lucky that all you got was a hair pull. He could have messed your face up. Obviously, Baxter was upset. I'd be upset, too. Yeah, but only girls pull hair, so. He could have broke your freaking nose. Oh, oh Stephen. Stephen, just be thankful and say you were sorry. <laughs> All right, little Jimmy there, there. <laughs> we'll see you Thursday for emails. We'll put a cap on the top when we come back. Yeah, it looks like Stephen clipped the front. It looks like, is that uh, one of the routes, I believe. Yeah, it is. Trevor Bain. Trevor Bain, yes. Gotta come back on you. Yes, barely. Easy. Stephen Wallace is gonna try to make a pass on the inside. Uh, looks like he got a little bit loosened up into the 30. That's Ron Hornaday gets underneath. There. Boy, our Camarola slides past. So does Ricky Carmichael there, the 34. Still Check up on the throttle, get a little bit loose. It's in the left rear. 2010 to 2011 was the best stint of Steve Wallace's career in NASCAR. In those two seasons combined, he notched three top fives and 18 top tens and finished 10th in the standings in consecutive seasons. Five straight full-time seasons saw a total of zero wins. So after 2011, Five Hour Energy pulled their backing and Rusty Wallace Racing scaled back a ton. And when I mean they scaled back, they scaled back from a NASCAR team to a very competitive late model team. You gotta remember, before Chase Elliott, Steve Wallace was the youngest winner of the Snowball Derby. It was natural that he was going to etch out a career in super late models after NASCAR ended. He's built up a pretty solid resume in his post-NASCAR career in the Cars Tour. He's pretty much transitioned from a NASCAR driver to just another weekly late model racer. But because of his famous last name and all the hype surrounding him very early on in his career, Steve Wallace is unfortunately considered one of the biggest busts in NASCAR history. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time. As he Thank comes down the track, when he comes that's, down the hill, this is when he's going to get into the side of the 20 car. Right there. Look at Steven Wallace in that 77. What a job. He missed one. What a job <laughs> by him, though. Yay!